Hello, my name is Alfonso Rodriguez Molares. Uh, I come from the University of uh, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and I will present to you today. If I manage to put this somewhere, pocket. Okay, this one. This one. Uh, a new uh, method to. Um, yeah, a new method to. Uh, yeah, improve the detection of the Intima Lumen uh, interface. So first, uh, just to make sure that I grasp your attention, and before getting into the details of the method, I would like to present you one of the last results that I will show, uh, which are, uh, yeah, what you can do with this uh, Intima Lumen uh, detection algorithm. So this is an unprocessed image of my carotid artery, and this is the result, uh, the, yeah, that you can get with this algorithm that I'm about to present to you. Before and after. Okay, let's gonna do it. So um, I guess most of you know uh, the anatomy of the carotid uh, artery, but uh, just to, to go through it, uh, we have, uh, yeah, carotid uh, artery walls, they have three different layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. Uh, so we end up with uh, three interfaces, the lumen intima interface, which is the innermost, the intima media interface, and then the media adventitia interface. One of the most important uh, numbers is the intima media sigmas, which m measures the distance between the lumen intima interface and the media adventitia interface. And this is important because it can correlate with the risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, it can be also used to track the advance of uh, atherosclerosis, and it has been uh, suggested by many associations and societies. And as we know, the uh, yeah, uh, use of ultrasound to measure the intima media thickness is fast, non-invasive, and uh, innocuous. So this is an image, a good image of the carotid artery. We can see the lumen intima interface there and there. It's a thin continuous line. And the media adventitia interface as a, a hyperchoic region more irregular and uh, yeah, not really continuous. We cannot see the uh, intima media interface because the acoustic impedance of both layers, the intima and the media, is very similar, so we don't get any reflection there. So in a manual uh, examination, uh, the sonographer will delineate both interfaces and then measure the distance between both. And, and that will be it. But th this has some problems uh, because it is operator dependent uh, and it depends also on the morphology or the sonication angle. And it has been proposed to use computational methods to try to yeah, address these uh, problems. But uh, still we have some other challenges that we need to solve. Uh, for instance, uh, in this image that we can see here, it is very difficult to see the Lumen Intima interface. And that is due to the high reverberation noise and the fact that the media adventitia pulse is way higher than the lumen uh, intima pulse. So that overshadows uh, yeah, uh, the lumen intima pulse. This, however, is a better image. We can see the lumen intima interface very clearly uh, and that it is continuous and smooth. This is a B-mode image, which is uh, obtained by extracting the envelope of, of RF data. But if we skip that part, if we just show the RF data, we see something like this. So still it's possible to see the Lumen Intima interface. And it's uh, yeah, a collection of pulses that changes from one RF scanline to the next with a yeah, slight delay. But we can see that the face is mostly the same all along it. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I don't know if this has a name, but I'm going to call this an RF mode image because instead of showing uh, the brightness, the, the envelope, I'm showing the RF signal. So uh, now it's uh, when I'm going to introduce the, maybe the only novel idea in this algorithm, uh, which is to try to bring from the topic of beamforming uh, one idea to using vessel wall segmentation, which is normally in the realm of image processing. And uh, this is no more than the delay and sum uh, concept, which I guess yeah, you all probably know, but uh, it's basically to apply a different delay to different channels. So if those delays correspond to a, to a given location in space, you are able to amplify the signal coming from that point of space uh, and yeah, keeping the other signals 
uh, yeah, the same value. So uh, going back to my RF image, what would happen if I were able to calculate this delay in the Lumen Intima interface, take a, a section of that uh, signal, delay it, and sum it, so uh, I got a coherent profile that uh, it will show that the Lumen Intima interface has a higher amplitude uh, while keeping the media venticia or the reverential noise uh, at the same level. So this is the idea I um, want to apply. Um, but of course we need to calculate those delays somehow. So I present uh, an algorithm to do that. It's probably not the best one because I don't have a trajectory in a, uh, yeah, in dealing in image processing uh, or, or segmentation techniques, but it, it will do the trick. So I can show you that the idea of combining coherently different RF scan lines can work. So it consists of three stages. Uh, the first time one is a multi-seeding strategy, then a delay estimation algorithm based on calculation of the highest cross-correlation path, and then a voting mechanism to try to get yeah, the most probably uh, yeah. Uh, in interface for the Lumen Intima. So I will explain first the, the second stage. So this uh, um, algorithm starts with the assumption that we have a seed that is close enough to the Lumen Intima pulse in a given RF scan line, so a good seed. Then we take an interval, which is uh, given by the position of the seed and the duration of the transmitted pulse, uh, and we take and we move to the next line and we take another interval, but just in the next line. Uh, we, I will call the first one the reference signal, and to the second one, to, uh, the ca candidate signal. So I calculate the cross-correlation between the two lines, and taking the maximum of the cross-correlation, uh, I, I can detect that delay. So if the maximum of the cro cross-correlation is greater than a given threshold, let's say 0 0.1 or 9, then uh, I update my delay, and the reference signal. Otherwise, I can calculate the delay as a trend based on previous values. I also keep a running average of the maximum correlation values for each uh, RF scanline. So if that value is greater than 0 0.8, I can move to the next uh, scanline. Otherwise, I'll stop because I have, uh, yeah, I consider that I have uh, lost the pulse. So, well, this will work in theory. But in order to do that, I really need a good seat. So that a seat that is sitting uh, precisely on top of the uh, yeah, Lumen Intima pole. But uh, that is quite difficult to get. So how I'm going to solve it? With brute force. So I take a very simple segmentation of the lumen of the carotid artery, and then take seats all along the, the, the boundary. And some of those seats will be good, and some of these will be bad. So how can we differentiate between good and bad seats? Uh, here I show you two examples. Here we have a good seat, or a seat that is well positioned. And you can see that the estimated Lumen Intima interface is very long and smooth. Uh, if we look at the cross-correlation values, it mostly state, uh, stays on top of yeah, 0.9, and uh, it is quite, yeah, yeah, it's quite constant. We have a dropout here, as you can see, but this uh, is uh, covered by this uh, inertial, inertial mechanism that I uh, devised. But it, with a bad seat, this seat is sitting on top of the media venticia interface. We can see that the cross correlation changes quite a lot. Mostly it is the inertial mechanism which gives us uh, this, uh, this shape. But, we have some information here to discriminate between good and bad seeds. Another interesting uh, fact is that good seeds will tend to agree between themselves, while bad seeds will uh, yeah, set the luminitima interface all over the place. So I can use a voting mechanism to, to try to uh, estimate how accurate me, uh, my uh, estimation is. So this is what I do. Uh, I, here I plot the, yeah, those are the, the estimation for different seats, and this is the mean value and standard deviation for each part of, of the image. And as you can see, when we uh, reach uh, yeah, the edges of the image, my standard deviation increases 
but mostly in the middle, I have a good estimation. Once that I have done all that, then I can delay all the signals and add them together, and then generate the, those cohesion profiles I was looking for. So uh, here are two cohesion profiles for the previous image, uh, for both the near and the far wall. So in the center of both graphs, you can see the LI uh, pulse, the lumen intima pulse. And as you can see, the amplitude of the lumen intima pulse has increased by around 12 dBs in both. But most importantly, if we look at the difference between the lumen intima uh, amplitude and the next line, the epoechoic line, that normally is used to segment uh, yeah, the media venticia layer, we can see an increase of around 20 dBs, which is quite good. Uh, so I can conclude that by using these cohesion profiles, we can improve the detection of the lumen intima uh, pulse and the segmentation of the carotid wall. So just to exemplify uh, how can this be applied to improve the image, you can just use the estimation and the cohesion profiles to create a mask, but then you can apply uh, to the image, the original image. And here present just a few results. Uh, this is the original image, and now improve with base cohesion profiles. Second one, now improve with the cohesion profile. Okay, so just to finish, I present a method that uh, it can, in theory, be used to improve the detection of the uh, Lumen Intima interface, but also to enhance uh, the visualization of the features in the carotid wall. Uh, we still are working on more advanced multi strategies uh, rather than this simple uh, lumen uh, segmentation. And uh, yeah, validating it with uh, numerical models and also including some more difficult morphologies. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>